Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today we have an extra special guest with us. Josh from Sound Diagnostics is here with us this evening. He is going to talk to us about the mobile testing that he offers in the Seattle area. And so if you are in the Seattle area for a cruise or for airline travel, anything at all that you find that you need a COVID test, he is a, an excellent resource for you. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to him. And when he is done, if I've got any questions, we'll just, I'll just ask him some questions. So thank you for joining us this evening, Josh. Perfect. Thanks, Allison. I really appreciate you having me on. Thanks so much. It's a wonderful resource that you have here, pulling all this information together for um, all your clients. It's, it's very helpful. I've, I've gotten lots of feedback from uh, customers that have gotten all kinds of helpful information from you. And I just appreciate what you're doing. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. So like Allison said, uh, my name is Josh McAllister. I'm the uh, owner and medical director of Sound Mobile Diagnostics. Uh, let me pull up a screen here with my contact information. There we go. So this is uh, Sound Mobile Diagnostics. Uh, you can read more about me on my website right here, soundmobilediagnostics.com, or you can email me, info at soundmobilediagnostics.com, or give me a call or text, 253 867 4 lab or 4522. And so just a little bit about myself. I am board certified in emergency medicine. I'm a physician and also board certified in clinical informatics through the American Board of Preventative Medicine. And I work full time in the emergency department at a large, uh, busy uh, ED in the Tacoma area. Um, during the COVID pandemic, I saw lots of um, patients coming to the ER wanting testing. And as you know, things rapidly change with uh, COVID. And we've gone through phases where we have hardly any testing access to uh, phases where we have very good testing access. And uh, now we're kind of in a phase where we have decent access, but um, it's starting to be rationed a little bit. And um, a lot of clinics and uh, hospitals are refusing to test um, patients who present with no symptoms uh, who want testing for travel. Um, and so I saw this as an opportunity to help uh, the community that I live in have better access to testing in general, um, but also um, kind of a niche that has grown as more areas have required testing is travel testing. And that's something that I seem to be specializing in as I get more and more clients that uh, need testing for, for travel. And as the, the requirements change, it's just it's so hard to stay on top of all of this. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just wanted to provi provide a little bit of education to um, the viewers out there. Um, I frequently get asked questions about all the testing that's available out there. And I just wanted to, um, without getting too technical or too scientific, um, give a little bit of education about this. So when it comes to COVID testing, there's two different types of testing that can be done. You can do antibody testing or antigen testing. Um, antibody testing checks your body's response to an exposure or a vaccination, which is essentially the same thing as an exposure. And so antibody testing is looking to see if your immune system has created antibodies that would then fight the virus in a repeat exposure. Uh, Antigen testing, on the other hand, looks for presence of either viral proteins or viral nucleic acid. So it's testing to see, is there actually virus present on the specimen? An antibody test is usually done on blood because it's looking at the antibodies in your serum, uh, which are created from your immune system. And an antigen test is usually done on a swab, either from the nose or from the nasopharynx, which is that deeper swab that uh, some of you may have had that feel like they're tickling your brain. Um, somewhat painful. Um, but some tests are set up to get the specimen there. When you talk about the antigen tests, there are even two different types of antigen tests. You've got the rapid antigen or the PCR. And then, um, oh, I'm sorry, this is just a little graphic um, showing the uh, COVID virus here in the middle and then um, some antibodies attacking that virus. So. So antigen tests, um, 
sorry, I can't see my screen here. Uh, the rapid antigen, like I said, checks for presence of the viral protein on the swab that's collected. And it answers the question, am I currently infectious? Do I have enough virus in my nose um, to cause an infection and be contagious to, to other people? Um, PCR, on the other hand, is a, a little bit of a different process. It takes that same nasal or nasopharyngeal swab, and then it goes through a process where it um, cleaves those proteins or cleaves that nucleic acid, and then a machine amplifies that. It duplicates it. And uh, frequently the threshold is set at 40 cycle thresholds, where it will go through that process 40 times. Once it's done that amplification process, then it checks to see, is it present or not? You can think of the PCR as answering the question of, are small amounts of viral nucleic acid present on the specimen? So they're similar, but they're a little bit different clinical questions. So the next slide shows a simplified example of, of how PCR works. You take the swab, and let's just say hypothetically, this would never happen, we could never quantify this, but hypothetically, let's say you have one particle of virus in your nose and the swab takes that out. So you're no longer contagious at all. You have no protein present, but it's on that swab. And then it amplifies that one protein into two. Then again, that two turns into four, we've got two squared then that four turns into eight, which is two cubed. Mm -hmm. Then we go through that process 40 times. Two to the 40th is this huge number here, which is one trillion, okay? That's huge. So of course, you know, the, the PCR is going to be positive in more cases, which is why some people say that PCR is more sensitive. And in layman's terms, yes, you can say that PCR is more sensitive, but it's really answering a different question. And when you read medical literature, the terms sensitivity and specificity are very clearly defined and they are metrics as to how a test performs in comparison to the gold standard. So if you're reading some medical literature and you see the term sensitivity and specificity, it doesn't mean necessarily what you think it means in this case. Okay. And, and then I just wanted to illustrate, a lot of people don't really kind of understand the concept of what a trillion is. If we talk about this as in seconds, one million seconds is 11 and a half days. One billion seconds is 31 and three quarters years. But one trillion seconds is 31,710 years. So, I mean, you can just see how huge that amplifies. It is huge. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, so that's kind of the, the basics of the, the different testing that's out there. Now I'll go into a little bit about my business. Um, people will uh, reach out to me uh, by any method possible. You can call me, you can text me, you can email me, or I've even got an online scheduling tool on my website um, that I do a pretty good job of keeping my schedule updated in there, um, but it's, it's restricted. I want people to know that if they make an appointment on there, someone's going to be available. Okay. Um, if it's if the time you want or need is not available, please reach out to me anyway, because uh, I do have a couple lab techs that help me. And if I'm not available, then uh, one of the lab techs most likely is, and we can probably get you in um, in a time frame that's reasonable. Oh, that's great. Um, I just don't want uh, someone to try and schedule an appointment and then have, have me not be available. So it is somewhat restricted. So please reach out to me. Once we agree on a time uh, and location, then uh, I email you registration instructions and an invoice by email. Okay. Um, you go on my website and I've got a, a secure portion on there that's HIPAA secure. Um, and you go through uh, and pr provide consent and registration. Honestly, a lot of the information that I have to collect on there is not information that I'm interested in. It's mandated by the CDC and by the Washington Department of Health. Um, there's a long list of data points that I'm required to collect and then subsequently report for every test that I do. So if you find yourself uh, asking why, why is this guy asking for this information, it's because the state or the CDC requires it. Um, 
we need you to register and pay prior to testing. And then um, we meet, we do the test. I'll go through the details of that on the next slide. Um, I do generate the lab report based on what you enter in that day to match your travel doc so that when you present them to wherever you're traveling, uh, there are no issues. Um, so once we meet, a uh, very simple process. Um, we're usually done start to finish in just over 15 minutes and you leave with results in hand. Okay. Uh, we meet, um, I'm always anxious to get the, the specimen collected and processing. Um, so I co coach you through collecting your own specimen. I'll be happy to collect it for you if you want, but I find that most of my clients are comfortable test, uh, collecting it themselves. Okay. And the test that I chose uses a nasal swab. Um, it does not use a nasal pharyngeal swab. I did not want my clients to go through the pain of having their brain tickled. Thank you. Um, there are Thank you. different <laughs> tests out there. Um, and it depends on how the test was uh, certified through the FDA and tested by the manufacturer. Okay. Um, it's not that one is better than the other. Um, it's just that's the way it was tested and certified. So that's the way it's got to be collected. Okay. So I'm always anxious to get that swab collected uh, because then it drops in the test tube uh, for one minute while it sits in the, the uh, liquid and processes. And then I drop the um, test strip into the test tube and that takes 10 minutes to develop. Okay. So I know that we've got 10 minutes where I've got a captive audience. So at that point, I usually uh, will check IDs. I wanna make sure that who I'm testing matches what's on the lab report. Okay. Um, and then uh, I get to have uh, nice, interesting conversations with my clients. I found out so many interesting facts and uh, I'm jealous about all the fun places my clients are traveling to. I bet. And then I show my clients the test and I explain to them what the result means and how it's negative. So okay. far, I've not had any unexpected positives. Oh, good. I, do I test, was gonna ask. Yeah, I do test uh, some people who want to know if they're sick, if they've had an exposure. I've had some positives, but uh, so far, no one traveling has had to change their plans. Oh, Thank that's goodness. wonderful. Good. And then uh, I present the uh, lab report to you uh, on paper, and you are free to go at that point. Okay. A frequent question I get is, uh, will the, the results be emailed to me? And I chose not to do that because uh, email is not secure. Yeah. Uh, I am a fully licensed lab with the state of Washington and I have to comply with HIPAA regulations. Mm -hmm. um, there are some HIPAA email services out there, but the cost of setting those up for the volume of testing that I do would have been prohibitive. And I didn't want to pass on that cost to my clients. I want to make this as convenient and as for affordable for you as possible. Oh, that's great. Well, and if people really need a digital copy, they could just take a picture of it, right? That's what I suggest. And that's what most people do. Good. Okay. So I know that, um, you know, paper is HIPAA secure and what you do with it is your business uh, from there. <laughs> I like so. that. Perfect. Yeah. Um, just a little bit about the test that I've got right now. Uh, I've got a decent supply of uh, the Quidel Quick View, and I chose those because they're nasal specimen mm -hmm. and because they have very good um, positive agreement and negative agreement to the PCR tests. Um, similar terminology is the sensitivity and specificity that I referenced earlier, but um, for COVID and uh, for comparison's sake, they're using positive agreement and negative agreement rather than those medically defined terms. Okay. And um, for a while, uh, about the best on the market uh, had numbers down here in the 80s. I want to say it was like 84% for a positive agreement and like 89% for a negative agreement. Mm -hmm. But then Quidel came out with their test, which blew everyone else out of the water. Um, and so that's why I've, I've moved to them. Um, okay. So this is a very good test, a uh, very simple uh, procedure, and it's nasal. That's the key. Good. I do also offer antibody tests. Um, I have currently the uh, FA step or fast step, okay. uh, which is done off a of finger stick. Uh, if anyone out there is diabetic or known anyone diabetic, you know, just a little finger stick, one drop of blood is all it takes. Okay. Um, similar process uh, goes on this little cartridge. And then uh, this one actually takes 15 minutes. Okay. So if anyone's interested out there um, while we're doing the uh, antigen tests for your travel requirements. If you've been vaccinated or had a prior exposure, um, then I can also do um, the antibody test for your knowledge uh, if you would like to add that on. Oh, 
That's great. So when they do, when you do that antibody test, does that help people know if their vaccine is staying strong? Like if they got vaccinated, like in January or December? Yeah. Yes. That's, know. that's one, one way to, um, to understand that. Okay. I think, um, as we all know, everything's changing rapidly with COVID and it's only been around a, about a year and a half. So we don't have a whole lot of long-term data on it. Yeah. So um, in a normal immune response uh, or normal vaccination, um, your body uh, takes a few days and then it starts making IgM antibodies, which are kind of the first responder. It's a very robust response. Um, comes on, you know, maybe three to 10 days after the exposure. And then it kind of trails off after about, you know, maybe 20 to 30 days. Meanwhile, your body's processing another antibody named IgGs, which oh. take longer to make, but they stick around longer. Oh, okay. Um, so the, the test that I do does tell us both. So um, by the fact, you know, if you're IgM positive and IgG positive, then you've had a recent exposure. Um, if your vaccination or exposure was more than about a month, month and a half, we would expect your IgMs to not be detectable and your IgGs to be detectable. Oh, okay. Um, and then at some point, those IgGs are going to drop off mm -hmm. and your immune system is going to uh, rely on the B cells and the T cells to have memory. Um, and then in a repeat exposure, those B cells and T cells would be called upon to make more antibodies. Oh, okay. So I don't know that we have enough data. Um, it's not something that I do clinically every day, so I'm not well read on how long those stick around, mm -hmm. but I have tested people that uh, were vaccinated um, January, February, and they mm -hmm. still had strong IgGs on the, the test. Oh, that's great. No, because I've just had people ask me because um, some people wanted to know before they traveled how good their immune what you know their immune system was. So that's awesome. They could find out at the same time. Yeah, we can definitely find yeah. out. But I will say, um, you know, we would have to do a little bit more research. Maybe talk with your doctor. That's the other thing. Okay. Uh, even though I am a physician, I can't give medical advice through this process. Um, the the insurance policy that I had to get to cover the lab uh, had a yeah. writer in there that. I'm not giving medical advice. I'm only doing lab testing. So I can give you the results. Um, and I usually give people a graph that shows those uh, curves that I talked about. Sorry, I didn't include it in the presentation That's here. Okay. I can email it to you if you want to include it on your website. Oh, okay. Um, Thanks. But uh, yeah, I can give you the information, mm -hmm. um, but I can't give you the interpretation. Uh, okay. I would say, you know, my, my common medical sense would say, if you're vaccinated, just because you don't have IgGs and IgMs left anymore, it, it doesn't necessarily mean you're not protected. Mm -hmm. um, it just means that we're kind of relying on those T cells and B cells to take over in a repeat exposure. And, so you're okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. Okay. All right. And then uh, just a little bit more about me. I've had uh, clients, uh, I've tested clients traveling all over um, many different countries. Uh, Scotland, Ireland, Thailand, Germany, Honduras. I've tested for uh, the major cruises that come out of Seattle. And uh, actually a fair number of carnival people are um, living here and then fly to Galveston and do the Caribbean. Oh, um, that's cruise interesting. Carnival. So I've, I've had a fair amount of carnival um, testing as well. Oh, good. I've had uh, testing for mass gatherings like the football game, the Seahawks game. Uh, I had someone who was going to, um, I believe, Alaska for a Foo Fighters concert, and the Foo Fighters were requiring a negative antibody test. Awesome. Uh, I've tested wedding parties. <laughs> and then uh, the most interesting story that I've had is um, new parents had a, a newborn baby. And by newborn, we were several months, I want to say three or four months old. Oh, but okay. uh, grandma lived... Um, in another country, I can't remember specifically where, but uh, they wanted to make sure that grandma did not bring COVID to see the, the grandbaby. So uh, they had me test her before they introduced a uh, grandbaby to grandma. Really? Yeah, so That's that was amazing. I got to be part of that, uh, expo uh, that, that first meeting and it, it was really heartwarming and uh, grandma broke out in tears. She was so excited when her test came back negative that she was gonna get to see her baby. 
That's just wonderful. Oh, let's see, you're changing people's lives with this. Yeah. That's so, wonderful. That's fabulous. Yeah. Um, this is kind of a geographic area of where we are. Uh, my lab is based here in Gig Harbor, which is out on this peninsula. Okay. Uh, for me to get up to SeaTac, this drive here takes me about 45 minutes with no traffic. And then to go on from SeaTac up to Pier 91 uh, or Pike's Place Market, which is right in here, uh -huh. um, adds on another 15 to 20 minutes with no traffic. So okay. um, I do do testing up at the pier and at downtown Seattle. Um, I'm happy to help you out, um, but it, I, I do need a little bit to get up there. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I can't do last minute testing uh, like that. And I'd usually like to do it at off peak travel times, not yeah. first thing in the morning, not in rush hour traffic. So mm -hmm. just for planning purposes. And then everyone always asks about costs and I'm very hesitant to put costs in a video because everything changes so quickly with COVID. That's okay. And, and I want to um, have a valuable service that, that my clients find valuable but I don't want to take advantage of anyone. That's not the business that I'm in. So I'm, I'm keeping my finger on the pulse of the cost of testing around here and availability. And I'm, I'm having a very competitive price. Okay. Um, so just keep that in mind. I will go ahead and share current costs as of today. Um, I will do up to three tests at the same time and location in downtown Seattle or the SeaTac area okay. for $400. That's so very if, reasonable. That's very reasonable. I think it's reasonable. And me as a traveler, I think that would be reasonable. Plus you come um, to them. You come to them. Sure. So they're not just paying for the test. They're paying right. for the convenience as well. Right. And it's the convenience. And I had a couple um, who was just the two of them and they just wanted the two tests that they needed. Uh -huh. And they were willing to pay a little bit extra for me to come up there and do that because they had a filled day of touring. They were going to the Pike Place Market and they were going to a museum and they wanted to see Jimi Hendrix guitar. Uh -huh. And uh, they were willing to pay for me to come up there and test them so that we took 15 minutes of their time and they were able to go on the rest of their sightseeing and do what they wanted to do before they went on their cruise. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, and like I mentioned, um, in my video about testing in Seattle, there are some other places, but you have to go stand in line there. And you have right. to figure out how you're going to get there. And then you have to spend your precious time standing in line. So, right. And yeah. I offered this couple a discount if they would come further south so that I wouldn't have to drive quite as far. And uh -huh. they said, look, what I'm going to cost on an Uber is going to offset that discount. So you just come to us. You take care of us. We'll make sure you're compensated. Good. Um, any additional testing that we add on, if there's another person or if, say, there's a couple that wants both the antigen test and the antibody test. I would add on $100 for each additional test. Oh, and then um, I know that cruising is a very social community. And if there were to be a group of people that got together and said, hey, we'll meet at a certain time at a certain location and I'm going to do 10 tests or, you know, a certain number of tests, then please reach out to me. Always reach out to me. Um, I'm very nimble and I can um, uh, adjust quickly and uh, hopefully get you taken care of at a reasonable cost. I, like I said, I don't want to take advantage of anyone. I want to make this affordable, but I also want to take the stress out of travel. Travel is stressful. Um, travel during a pandemic, more stressful. Travel with testing that's got requirements that are constantly changing during a pandemic, even more stressful. Oh, yeah. So I find that my clients uh, that wind up using me are very happy with the customer service and very happy with the convenience that I provide. Good, good. I, I can't imagine anyone not being so pleased. You're so convenient. You do excellent service. Yeah, I highly recommend him my, to my people. Yes. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Uh, this just has my contact information. I'll email this to you, um, but I'll go ahead and take this off the screen so you can see me. And uh, I'll just open it up. Did, did you have any questions for me, Allison, or um, any questions that have come in from your customers or clients? Um, well, you answered, they were wondering about how you provide the test results. And so just knowing that they get a paper, but no matter... Um, what device you've got, you can take a picture of it so that you've got that handy in case you lose your paper. Right, for sure. Just and snap you know, a picture of it. A lot of people are going to ask. I'm assuming you don't bill insurance. I have just told people that they need to do that if they want. Okay. Right. Yeah, that 
you know, in my primary job, I see so much overhead and so much headache that um, goes billing insurance that when I set up my company, um, I decided I was not going to do that. I, I don't have the, the time to do that. Um, and I would have to pass that cost on to my clients. And I, I don't want to charge my clients more than, than is necessary. No, I don't blame you. And a lot of insurance companies, they're not covering COVID testing for travel anyway. Exactly. So they'll cover so you for sick, but not. For travel, definitely not. Uh, that's the trend that I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. um, my customers that call uh, and want testing because they don't feel well and they just don't want to get out of their house and they don't want to go to the clinic and, mm -hmm. and wait. Um, they're disappointed that I don't bill for insurance. But again, I mean, so much overhead would go into that that it would not make it worth it. So. It would just end up being too much. Yeah. No, that sounds good. And so um, you are able to come to the port on embarkation day. Yes. Right? People were, yes. that's what I thought. Yeah, he will come to you wherever you are. And the few people that have told me that they used him, um, which has only been a couple so far, I think he's had more maybe than people told me, but they were very pleased. They said he was professional and it was a really good um, answer to the problem. And so I know that the cruise lines are making it now so that you can order a COVID test and do it with the healthcare provider online. But to me, I think that this is, um, you might want to do that. But also, I think that yours is extra valuable because sometimes that might fall through. Or if they get a false positive on that and they still want to go, then this is a good answer. But also sometimes you get somewhere and um, like one person mentioned that they accidentally got logged out of their email that had the results in it oh, no. and they couldn't get back into their email. Oh my goodness. And so everyone just have this in your back pocket as a really good option. Even if you think you've got everything figured out, know what you're going to do if something doesn't work out. Right. Sometimes right. you go to a lab and then they're slower getting the results back to you than you expected or um, I also know that where you order tests from through Optum they are in a very tight I'm supply sure, and so um, yeah yeah I, I don't want to frighten anyone um, and everything is new they just started I believe last week where they're shipping these out from uh, is it Optum it is Optum um, but I did have a client call me and said that they tried three separate times to get a shipment Mm -hmm. And the tracking numbers never did anything. It was just label created um, and they didn't get their test delivered in time. Um, so they, they met with me and, and got their testing done. Good. Well, that's so good. I, it, everything's so new and changing so rapidly. Um, you know, that could have just been a fluke in that system or, or who knows. Yeah. Um, but like they you said, you know, it, it's a tool. Uh, my service is a tool and, um, I'm available to you. Um, so just keep that in mind. I don't want to sway you away from using someone that you've already uh, chosen to use. Um, but if, if something happens and you need me, give me a call. Thank you, Josh. That's just perfect. I think that you have covered everything. If anybody has any questions, just put them in the comments below. And um, I can always send um, Josh an email and I'll ask him the question and then I'll um, put the answer down there for you. And if we need to do a follow-up video, we will. But I think sure. that you have covered it really well. Thank Excellent. you very much for coming today. Thank you very much. It's been really nice. All right. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. I appreciate yours as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be talking to everyone soon. You all take really good care. God bless.